Hey drummers, hope you're well, right? Shout out to Superstar Channel member David and lots of others. Counting on the drums 101. What's the point of counting for drummers? People say, oh, I don't want to count. I just like to feel things. I just hear them and play it back. Why are you counting? Well, I'm not against feeling things. I'm not against playing by ear. Those things are brilliant. Feeling things is the whole reason we're here. That's the whole point in the music. I love it. But counting does something very specific. Every drummer, I think, certainly in my experience, every drummer hits a point where feeling it, playing by ear, doesn't cut it. There's a bit where it starts getting confusing. Those drummers who said, I'll just like to feel it, at that point, they start saying, oh, I don't know what it is. I just can't get this. I'm just, there's something weird about this. I don't know what it is. It's really, and that's when they start saying, this is really hard. I'm struggling with this. Counting is your candle in the dark in that moment. When things get tricky, Counting is a reference point. Counting is a way through. Counting is a way of breaking things down, seeing what's going on. When you're on stage playing something and it's all flowing, of course, we're not sitting there counting one, and two, and three, and four, and when you're performing. But when you're in that necessary mode of breaking things down, when things get tricky, counting is your, again, your candle in the dark. I can't think of a better phrase to describe it. I'm going to do two basic things today. I'm going to play a basic rock beat and a nice, simple, basic drum fill. I'm also going to play some straightforward 16th notes. I'd say when you're getting started, these are the two most important bits of counting. You can build it from there. Uh, the really, really, really important bit about counting that I think is super helpful that often drummers overlook is actually say, being able to say it out loud while you play. And it's really interesting to me how sometimes drummers who come along for sessions who've been playing the drums for years can't actually count out loud still while they play. Even though they say things like, I understand the importance of counting, they still can't actually do it out loud. So it's a really, really important thing. It will help you so much, in my opinion. Here's a basic rock beat. What we might call a straight eights feel, right? The count is one and two and three and four and. Now here is 100% what I'd recommend doing if you're a beginner, intermediate, or even if you're not, but you are with counting. I would just sit and play that groove and some really basic drum fills. Just make sure you can maintain out loud a count. Because what happens is we start learning parts and your drum teacher starts saying, oh, this fill comes, comes in on beat three, comes in on beat four. Now what I've noticed is a lot of people honestly just really struggle with that count and like maintaining that count to the point, especially when music's playing, when they're playing along with music, to the point where they can actually select that moment to play the drum fill. So it's really about just spending quality time sitting on a basic groove and saying the numbers out loud. Just get a feel for it, man. Just get, like you, you need to get automatic with that. So one and two and three and four and one and two. Play simple fills. Three. And one and two and two and four and three. So play whatever it is that you would normally play, right? Nice simple time, grooves and fills. Two and three and four. The snare hit is two and four. A backbeat. Three and four and one and two and three and four and and three and four. You get it? Just make sure you can really sit on it. Two and Three and four and and when you do fills, your count doesn't break. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and. If it feels comfortable, start playing some more uh, funky things. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four. And And two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. That would be totally what I'd recommend. Sit and make sure you can say one, and two, and three, and four, and. And then what you can start doing is say, right, I'm going to start some drum fills, for example, on beat three. One, and two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So once you get comfortable with that basic count, just challenge yourself to start drum fills on a certain beat, on beat one, on beat two, on beat three, on beat four. Here's a drum fill starting on beat two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This time, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get it? So pick a beat and say, right, I'm gonna go out of my groove, start on the drum fill at that point. Say the numbers out loud. If you're getting 
confused just and, and losing the count out loud, that's fine. Just simplify the fill, slow down, find the point where you can do one and two and three and four and out loud, and then build it back up again. So this is just about getting familiar with that count. This is an unbelievably useful skill that in my experience, a lot of people just don't bother to develop. And it's, it's just a key that unlocks so much learning on the drums. Uh, let's now turn to just regular 16ths. I'm going to take a single stroke roll of 16ths. The reason I'm choosing this alongside a regular rock beat is people come in over and over and over and over and over again to my studio and they say, can I learn the Bo Diddley beat, right? Something like this, or some other thing a bit like that, dance with the devil. I made a video a while back about a single stroke sambo. or you know hundreds of other like basically accent patterns within a single stroke roll and when we when we when they do that i say yeah sure let's do it we start to play it and if they get it straight away then cool typically with somebody who's not been playing the drums that long it, it it doesn't work like that and often it doesn't like work like that for me learning things often we of course as drummers we have to break things down and build them back up now what not always but very often reveals itself as we start breaking the thing down is at that point that particular drummer isn't yet fluent with one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, that count that we would apply to a set of six, sixteenth notes, that reference point, because then we start saying, okay, well, what this is, is, you know, for example, in the bow diddly, you're playing a single stroke roll, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, you know, right, left, right, left, all the way, sixteenths. And what the bow diddly beat is, is accents within that roll, right? One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So the basic prerequisite is being able to play an unaccented role, but and having that count, right? So if you've got that count, you can then select the notes that you're going to accent and you can actually, like I said in a previous video that seemed to amuse people, you can corner the bastard, right? You can say, okay, that when you know when you try and play something by ear and, you, and that, like I was talking about earlier, people say, oh, I'm just not getting it, I'm adding it. And sometimes people add in notes or take notes away or they change the sticking or the rhythm changes. It gives your confusion about a, a pattern, for example, like the Bow Diddley, just nowhere to hide because the, you lay the thing out and this is, it just boils down to some pretty basic principles about just being bothered to do something and how and the power of simply being bothered to truly engage with something as opposed to just casually trying to learn it. And that's when people just, I, th I think, uh, this always makes me think of the, the classic book Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman and that kind of f quick, easy, simple thinking of like, oh, it just goes a bit like this, bum, 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 bum. And, that, and that's fine if you either get it by that method or you're, you've got an approximation of it that you're happy with. But if you truly want to learn something, this is about breaking it down, going slow, being bothered to really engage in it and put that count to what you're playing. One E and duh. Two E and a. Uh. Three E and a. Uh. Four E and a. Uh. So when a drummer says that, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, and even now, 1500 videos later, people all the time say to me, what is that? When a drummer goes one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, what does that actually mean? What's the point of that? That is the basic count for 16th notes. Each of those sounds is one hit and it's a reference point running through the music so that you can then apply, for example, accents or you know, either play or leave out any of those notes. It's a, it's a grid. It's a reference point running through the music. Let's just take some time with that. This is a bar of 16th notes. As a single stroke roll, this is the count. One E and a. Uh. Two E and a. Uh. Three E and a. Uh. Four E and a. Uh. So that is huge. Being able to do that and say it out loud. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Because then when you're building up bow diddly, one E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a, uh, or whatever else, there's some method in the madness. There's a plausible way by which you will learn it other than, I'll just pull it out of thin air. This dangerous idea of talent, I think it's unhelpful off an idea of talent. People say, oh, this person's so talented because they just heard and they played it back. Well, so what? Some people have a, more of a natural aptitude than someone else but if you do enough repetitions of the right thing you're always going to trump someone who's just got talent but doesn't doesn't do the work right always without fail so this is about breaking it down and being able to do these basic things say it out loud let's recap we did two things today first one was playing a basic straight eights feel and counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three 
and four and playing simple drum fills. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Four and. As you get comfortable with that, selecting which beat you're going to start your fill on. Let's go for beat three. One and two and three. Right, being able, making sure you can say that count out loud as you go in and out of fills, uh, and then secondly, we did a single stroke roll uh, as sixteenth notes, and the count was one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. Make sure you can play this roll and say those as you go. One e and a two e and a. If you're doing this, one e and a two, two, two three four. No. Like, be specific, be deliberate, be specific, because it will reward you, in my opinion, in my experience, in the end. One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Long story short, make sure you can do those two things. One and two and three and four and 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 and one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Make sure you can play and say along in time with the correct count, those two simple things, before you start saying you're struggling with anything, before you start saying this is hard, this is confusing, I'm not talented. Make sure you can do those two basic things. They are the keys that unlock so many doors, I think. Obviously, there's more counts than that, but that's the, that's where I would start. That is counting 101. Shout out to Superstar Channel member David. Everyone else is asked about that. See you soon. Cheers.